Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. A pair of tight ends will be on the field today looking to do whatever it takes to give their team an advantage. It's Bennett's Packers going up against Rudolph's Vikings. With that, let's welcome in our fine broadcast team. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, it's one of the new jewels of the NFL, no doubt, as you get a look inside U.S. Bank Stadium here in Minneapolis. It can certainly get loud inside this building. And just a few moments ago when the Vikings were introduced, it was downright shaking in here. They're set for football as the Vikings get ready to do battle with the Green Bay Packers. And welcome again, everybody, alongside Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn. And, and Larry, he took a moment to highlight the tight ends that we're going to see in this one. I know in our production meeting, we were talking about what we wanted to highlight pregame. And you said tight ends. Why did you say that? Because it can be such a matchup issue for defenses nowadays because these tight ends, they're oversized guys, but they can run as well. So who are you going to cover them with? If you use a traditional linebacker, they're usually going to run past those guys. If you're going to use a smaller corner, maybe they'll be too big. Can a safety match up and run with them and also use enough bulk to keep them from just having their way? So, so many ways that tight ends are used nowadays, they're fun to watch. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. Minnesota's offense coming out behind Case Keenum. They struggled against Detroit 14 to 7. I guess both offenses struggled in that game, but. Keenum starting in place of Sam Bradford, Charles, for the third consecutive week. And he's actually done what a backup quarterback needs to do, and that's take care of the football. No interceptions in those three games. Had his team in position to win a couple of them. They just haven't been able to pull it off. You know, they're missing Sam Bradford, obviously. Case Keenum, that's why you signed him, to be that guy who can hold the fort. Now a play fake here on first down. They find some open field here. And oh, right away, he lost the football. And the Packers pick it up. And he will bring this one back. A fumble return for a Green Bay touchdown. So the defense forces the fumble. They get the score. And a guy on defense becoming offensive there, Charles. And you know they love that. Any guy on defense loves to pick up the ball and have it in his hands and try and score himself. In this case, that's exactly what happened. He'll be singing in the shower post game. On is Mason Crosby for the point after. And it's good to make it 7-0 Packers. The scoop and score, always an exciting play in football, and we witnessed it there, grabbing it off the ground and then rumbling it into the end zone for six. And you can bet they're preaching two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. 
While we wait for Minnesota to take over on offense, gives us a chance to discuss the Dalvin Cook injury, tearing his ACL in week four. Where do they go from here in the backfield? Well, Jerick McKinnon was already on the roster. All right? He'd been a guy who was a primary ball carrier. Remember when Adrian Peterson got hurt in the 2016 season? But they picked up Latavius Murray in free agency, and many thought he would be the starter from game one. Turned out Dalvin Cook showed up and beat him out. But Latavius Murray, Jerick McKinnon, thought to split some carries and make some big plays for Minnesota now. First carry for Latavius Murray. And he'll go down right at the 30-yard line. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. left for the offense. It's second down. All right, here we go. Green, 39. Green, down. Keenum now to throw. Going with a screen for Murray. And he maybe makes it back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. Nothing on the screen that time. Now it's third down. And the offensive starters for the Vikings. Minnesota had a very optimistic vision of what they would do on offense in 2016, but a couple of key injuries altered that landscape. Running back Adrian Peterson and quarterback Teddy Bridgewater. That led to them scrambling throughout the season to try and fit together their offense, try to put the running game and a new passing game together. And instead of having a big year, they finished 28th overall in total offense. From the gun on third down, Keenum. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. down is Keenum. He's just going to dump this one off to his fullback out of the backfield. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. It'll be a two-yard gain, and that'll make it a second down. The starting defense here for the Packers, and we need to give a shout-out to Clay Matthews. Picked up career sack number 75 against the Bears last Thursday night. Makes him the all-time sack king in Green Bay. Not bad. Uh, how about that Matthews family? We talk about it all the time, but Clay didn't have to go far to get tips on how to rush the passer, did it? No. I mean, his father played in the league. It felt like forever. I think he played until he was about 40 years old and was a Pro Bowl, all-pro type of an outside linebacker. I wonder if he's working on his hands and his movement from the time he came out of the crib. On play action, now Keenum. And he's got the hook up here. It's Kyle Rudolph. And he's brought down. He got 18 yards out of that one, and it gets him a new set of downs. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to spring the tight end free downfield for the completion. So the offense has it first and 10. Let's go. Now a give, left side. This is Murray. Touchdown, Vikings! Latavius Murray, 37 yards. And the Vikings are an extra point away from tying this thing up. Well, partner, that was another explosive run. And one thing I've learned in our time in this game, yes, the offensive line has to get a lot of credit. But for big runs to occur, the wide receivers have to block well downfield. And then you have to have a good guy carrying the ball too, right? Oh, without a doubt. You need that difference maker lugging the rock. Kai 
Ty Forbath on for the extra point. It's good, and we're all tied at seven apiece. So the drive there took six plays, and it culminates with a Latavius Murray touchdown run. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. Set to return, this is Jeff Janis. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And great field position coming up as he gets this just shy of the 45 out of bounds at the 44. Aaron Rodgers bringing the Packers on the field, and after throwing four touchdown passes last week in the win over Chicago, he's now thrown 10 on the year, tied with Tom Brady for the NFL lead. He is absolutely sensational, isn't he? Wasn't there a 47-minute lightning there delay was, this yeah. game? Didn't cool him down. <laughs> Not one bit. Maybe he gathered some strength from it. But how about the Packers and the Bears? Their rivalry goes back to 1923. Mm -hmm. And the Packers now, for the first time since, what, 1933? hold an advantage in the series. The Packers now lead the series 95-94 with six ties. Aaron Rodgers powering Green Bay. Rodgers now on first down. And Nelson's got it here right side. Avoids him at the 40. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. A good pick up there at 22. I like the screen being called here early in the game, especially on the opening drive, because, Brandon, when guys come out of the locker room, especially those pass rushers, they are so amped up to get to the quarterback that you can use that against them, and a screen pass is a great way of doing it. A lot of teams against good pass rushing teams, they want to run the screen 10 to 12 times in a game. So here we go, first and 10 now. The first carry here for Ty Montgomery. Stops short of the 25. The nice move couldn't ultimately free him. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. I think many people thought Ty Montgomery would automatically go back to being a wide receiver this year. But it appears he's going to stay at running back. I know they drafted Jamal Williams from BYU, but Montgomery proving his worth. And he proved it, yeah, proved it last year. 5.4 yards per carry, fourth best in the league. Inside the 20 at the 19. It goes as a gain of eight and it moves the chains. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook, go play action, toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down, keep the sticks moving. So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. First down, here's the run with Montgomery. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. It's a good gain of 11, sets him up first and goal. I absolutely love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. And he's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers. And they're usually known as quicker than fast. 
In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. Now they'll throw with Rodgers. And he's going to take it in. Touchdown, Packers. Randall Cobb from eight yards out. And the Packers have taken the lead. He's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. The drive summary that time, five plays. And it ends with a Packers touchdown. Crosby on now to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Now the Vikings now heading on to the field. And that last drive was very, very balanced, pretty methodical. You think they go that route again? I'm always of the school that until they stop me from doing something, I'm going to continue. And I think that that's exactly what they'll look to do. But the beauty is the balance that they've created sets up opportunities for big plays. Looks like a run, turn into a play action, and throw one deep. down Keenum he's got it complete to Diggs right side and he's going to be out of bounds at the 39 14 yards that time for number 14 by the way Stefan Diggs 391 receiving yards that leads the league through four weeks of the season and what a bargain he's been because he wasn't a high draft pick remember they got him in the middle rounds I think he was a fifth round pick coming out of Maryland but when he came out of high school, one of the top-ranked kids in the country, he has more than fulfilled his promise at this point, and he really doesn't care who's playing quarterback, does he? He's had Teddy Bridgewater, Sam Bradford, and now Case Keenum, and he continues to put up big numbers. Let's go! Blue On first down, Murray. And he's got room! And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And it'll be second and very short. That was a good, strong run there. While it won't pick up a first down, it was definitely something needed by that offense. A positive run. They got a good push by their guys up front. Maybe something they can build on as this game continues. Second down run for Murray. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Shotgun snap for Keenum. Throw left side on target to Thielen. 
And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. 17 yards on the pickup there, and the drive will continue. Now, that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, tight, sharply run route. Again, zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. Keenum now on first down. And he's going to go out of bounds, taking it down inside the 25. 11 more on that one and another first down. That's a matchup maybe they go back to their outer third of the field as this game continues. Yeah, I think back to my high school coach, John Ford, he used to say when we got big plays early in a game or good plays, you know, he'd say, foul it away, lad, foul it away, because he'd want to come back to it later in a key situation. They may come back to this one a little more often than that. Didn't he say laddie or did he say lad? Yeah, it just depended on what he was feeling at the okay. moment. Okay, I thought, I thought that was the guy you told me about that used to say laddie a lot. Laddie? When you heard laddie, he was usually in a pretty good mood. Lad? Yeah. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. for a cutback lane, but nothing there as he's met at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. So nothing there. I don't know that that's all in the back, though. you got to look at blocking there, don't you? I would agree with that totally. At some point, they have to win at the point of attack. Instead, it was the defense getting it done again and holding them to no gain. They go with Murray again. Uses the stiff arm. A little second effort there on the strong run. And then drop just inside of the 20. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll set up a third down. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. Play number seven now coming up on the drive. Third and five. Now Keenum. Oh, he may have gotten lucky. Tried to dump it off underneath on the check down. Nearly picked. Instead, it's incomplete. I think that was a good job there defensively. They did allow him to drive all the way downfield, but once they got their backs to the goal line, they really turned up the pressure. Yeah, they let him get all the way down here. Now the field shrinks. They've struggled to convert, and that last incompletion brings up fourth. On now is Kai Forbath to try the field goal. From the right hash, it's a 35-yard attempt. And Forbath will put this one through, and they'll cut the lead back down to four now at 14-10. Well, it's not unusual to know that Kai Forbath has kicked for multiple NFL teams, right? Washington, New Orleans. They took over the Vikings job when Blair Walsh ended his tenure there when he was struggling. How about his start with the Vikings, though? Made 15 straight. Yeah, he took over in Week 10, and you're right. Hit every field goal the rest of the season.
Forbath now to kick it away after the made field goal. This will be taken in at the one. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Now trotting out there, the Packers getting ready to go. And that recipe on their last drive that resulted in a touchdown looked pretty good, so they'll be hoping to do that once more. And it takes me back to when we sat with the offensive coordinator and the head coach. They felt pretty good about their game plan and thought there were some holes in the defense, and they exploited them the last time out. Let's see if they can come back and put together a similar drive. And we'll see if they can do just that. Start on the ground with Montgomery. A very good move, but for a short gain out near the 32. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. And now the offensive starters for the Packers. One thing about talent, it travels in the NFL. And Martellus Bennett, no matter where he plays, no matter what uniform he puts on, he plays at a Pro Bowl level. Strong, fast, smart, able to get down the middle of the field and also work on the perimeter to make big catches and provide an excellent target for his quarterback. On second down, here's Rodgers. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. at the Vikings defensive unit. Minnesota head coach Mike Zimmer made his reputation as a defensive coordinator in this league, and that did not change in 2016. His team finished third overall in total defense, and despite many injuries, kept his team in the playoff hunt throughout the season. So a third and nine, and six defensive backs out there in the dive. Patrolling the passing lanes. Working from the gun, Rodgers. And Adams has it, complete. And he's got a first down as he's up to the 48. 17 yards is the pickup there for number 17. He's such a good route runner, shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. Fresh set of downs here. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll lose yardage here back at the 47. It's a loss of a yard there and now second down. So when you call a corner blitz, what a lot of teams call a cat blitz, you're expected to come after the quarterback. But in this case, he ran into the ball carrier. Really nice technique, because what you do is you come deep as the deepest offensive player so he can't get outside of you. Again, they'll go ground with Montgomery. And very little running room there. He did get a couple up to the 49. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Throwing his Rodgers on third down. He's going to launch this thing way downfield. And incomplete. He can't hang on. Would have been a nice catch. Instead, it brings up a fourth down. And it is true. You can draft the fastest. You can draft the most athletic guys. But if they don't know the art of positioning, sometimes it's all for naught. In this case, in the right spot, that forced the incompletion. Yeah, but had his hands on it for a second. Would have been a tough catch, though. Falls incomplete. Now on to kick it away, the rookie from Miami, Justin Vogel. Marcus Sherrill's back deep for Minnesota. And that is...
that's much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. And out now come the Vikings. here on first down. He's going to air one out. And got his man complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A gain of 32 that time. A nice job there, Charles. They picked up the blitz, were able to complete the pass. That had the total feel of a quarterback in control. Red blitz, got him into the right protection scheme. So he doesn't get hit back there. He's got a chance to step up with supreme confidence and deliver it downfield for a nice completion. And before they can run another play, the clock hits triple zeros. And time is up on the first quarter. 14-10 the score. We're back to Minneapolis in just a moment. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Back now with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. Second quarter begins with the Vikings holding the football, and they've got it here with a first down. with Murray and he'll get this down only to about the 46 two yards on the pickup there it'll be second and eight yeah that wasn't a big run just a short one there but guess what sometimes you treat it like boxing you throw that jab out there and you throw it again you throw it again then you come with a big punch later maybe they're just trying to set him up Second down is Keenum. And he'll go down inside the 45 before going out of bounds. Call it a three-yard gain, and that'll make it third down. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right, whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case the feet, did a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. And he's able to find Diggs. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line. And they convert on third with a gain of 22. How many times we see it? I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass trick in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll at least get him inside the red zone here, down to about the 19. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. Keenum 
to throw on second down. Yeah, quick throw here. That's complete. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. It's a good gain of 11. Sets him up first and goal. And the big guy catches the ball out of the backfield. And oftentimes, it's quite a surprise to a guy playing defense because not ordinarily thought as a pass catcher, it often works when they decide to dial it up. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom, quick, 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 and what a terrific play, holding him to no gain. Now the Georgia Southern man, this is Jarek McKinnon. And only about a yard there as he takes it from the nine to the eight. Partner, I know we're in a goal-to-go situation, but my goodness, think about running the ball here. Not even a thought, yeah, is it? Defensively, they're in a prime spot. And I think the defensive guys are probably expressing themselves to them as well. I wouldn't run it here, guys. You might want to try throwing it. Now Keenum on third and goal. And he will score. Touchdown, Vikings. Adam Thielen from eight yards out. And the Vikings are able to strike for six. And no matter how it comes about, when you get good field position, you have to make the defense pay. Short fields usually make for good offense. Now four bath for the extra point. It's good, and they'll take a 17-14 lead. So that drive goes eight plays, and it all culminates in a touchdown for Minnesota. out to kick this one away. This fielded at the two. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. The Packers offense now. They get ready to head back onto the field. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trite expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. They go play action for Montgomery, and now Rodgers. Pressure coming from the Vikings, and they get there and bring him down. Emerson Griffin, he's the one that got to him. He takes him down for a loss of nine. Defensive end gets in there that time. They were in a 4-3. What's the responsibility of the ends versus the tackles there, Charles? Well, most of the time, when you talk about the ends, they're your pass rushers. They're, they're the guys that you turn loose to try and get to the guy who's going to throw the football. The tackles, usually more of the run-stuffing variety. But the way this game is advanced, you're wanting a little bit of everything out of all of your guys. But let's just go ahead and break it down and make it simple. The guy who's the right defensive end versus a right-handed quarterback, 
That's the blind side. He's going after the quarterback. He's going to put him on the ground. On second down, Montgomery. And he goes nowhere. He'll lose yardage back at the 17. It'll be a loss of a yard, and they're going to face an uphill battle here on third and long. Partner, you mind if I take off this headset and put on a coaching headset? You want to get this running game going? I want to get this running game going. I'm going down there and saying, gentlemen, we have got to run the football. We've got to get it going right now. Yeah, to this point in the second quarter, it has been a struggle. And some secondary help here for the defense in the nickel on third and long. A play fake to Montgomery. Now Rodgers lets it go for Nelson. So they took a shot there on third down. Couldn't get it. Now it's four. The best receivers we know always tease their quarterbacks to, hey, no matter what you do, you cannot overthrow me. Well, guess what? That's exactly what happened on that play. Normally, they time it up pretty well, but on that one, he just overshot him. On now is the Packers punter. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And he is hit pretty hard from the side as he's knocked down right there around the 35-yard line. And now we move our focus to Stephon Diggs. And we roll tape now on his solid performance. And what we've been seeing so far is a great combination of finesse and aggressiveness in running his routes and making plays. That's what you want in any type of a receiver. The guy knows exactly what to do on a given play and ends up making the plays that help your team win. Over the middle here to Rudolph. Give him nine there on the first down completion. When you execute a drag or a clear out really well and give him a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant tight end on that one. at the 43-yard line. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. The evolution of Clay Matthews as a player is just one that they, they're going to end up writing books about. He didn't even start until his senior year at USC. He didn't start in high school, and now he's at all-pro level in the NFL. How about the play he just made there? Yeah, he has certainly made a name for himself. William Clay Matthews III. The Vikings on third down. They've been good. Three for four thus far. This time they face a third and two. They'll run here. It's Murray. And he's got the first down as he's up to the 45-yard line. Just a gain of a couple, but good enough to keep the drive rolling. Third and two, right? So this is a situation where low man has got to win at the line of scrimmage, but it's not just the low man winning. It's the low man who's winning with some force, and they had that to pick up the first down. Barely picking it up, but they did. receiver was Laquan Treadwell. That'll bring up second down. You know, Charles, to transition totally for a second here, I'm looking down at the standings of the National Football League right now. There's a few young coaches that are having quite a bit of success early, isn't there? They certainly are, and some of them have taken over 
established programs like Vance Joseph, right? The Broncos just two years removed from a Super Bowl. Nine and seven last year, and Gary Kubiak stepped down. How about the job he's done out of the gate? Has them three and one. But for guys who are also first time head coach, Sean McDermott in Buffalo, they're leading the AFC East. How about the job he's done in the early going? And Sean McVay has Jared Goff looking like the number one pick in the draft overall. They played awfully well and just won at Dallas this past week. The Vikings on third down. They've been near perfect. Four for five to this point. This is third and four. Here we go now. Three. Throwing now is Keenum. And he's got Kyle Rudolph. Seven yards there. Good enough to move the sticks. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to. Pick on the first down. It's Murray, and an alley to run, and brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. You and I both know that you don't really, truly replace Adrian Peterson, but Latavius Murray's a really good back. Similar running styles, too. Won't wear the same number, we know that. But when you see him run, you might see a little bit of that in him, upright with some power. Play fake here on first down. Looking left side, and he's got a man. It's Murray. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. Give him three on the play, and it'll be second down. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. Second down. Over the middle complete. That's Morgan. And he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. As far as tight ends go, this guy's not a speed burner. He's much more of an inline blocking type of a tight end. But how about this last play? Made a nice catch and picked up the first down. That's what impresses me about him. When he's called upon, he usually gets it done. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. They keep it on the ground, but this time it's Murray. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. A minute 58 to go in this first half of play. More from Minneapolis after this. A reminder coming up here at halftime. We'll ship you off to Orlando. Larry Ridley will have first half highlights and analysis. LR, plenty to show in this. This long drive for the offense. Three, three, three. They go back to Murray on first down. 
down at the two. Broke through first contact, but ultimately stopped shy of the goal line. He'll get six on the ground there, and it'll be second and goal coming up. And, Brent, they went to a nickel defense, and that's a surprise this close to the goal line because ordinarily you use the back end of the end zone, the sidelines as extra defenders, and you want bigger people on the field to try and help against the run. They'll try the air now with Keenum. Staying on his feet. And they're going to get to him. A sack. Sacked back at the nine-yard line. Mike Daniels in there to get him for a loss of five. When you're this close to the goal line, you've got to expect pressure from the defense. So the ball's got to come out fast. Got to get out of his hands quicker. The offense on third down, they have been superb. Five for six to this point. They're looking at a third and goal here. From the gun, it's Keenum. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. That's a tough one not to hang on to on third and goal, but good job defensively to get there and jar it loose. Agreed. That was really, really nicely done because there's no pass interference on the play. Timing excellent to get in there and knock it away. A win for the defense, and it brings up fourth down. And Forbath will put this one through, and they stretch the lead to six. It's 20-14 to 14 now. So a 15-play drive. Can't believe that only resulted in three, but it did. That is somewhat amazing, isn't it? When you hold the ball that long, run offense that well, yet only put three points on the board, it has to be a little bit of a disappointment, doesn't it? Has to. Forbath now to kick it away after the main field goal. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. The Packers offense now heading back out onto the field. And what do you think goes on here in this situation? If you got the football, you're trailing, you're back in your own territory with just a little time. Do you try something? You're thinking about jump-starting your team, right? You just mentioned it. They're down. They're trying to get back into the game. But you've got to figure if something goes wrong, you may have put yourself in a spot where you may not be able to come back in the second half. Managing risk, this is a big decision here. First and ten, here's Rodgers. He's going to dump that off to his running back, Montgomery. And he'll go out of bounds across the 35-yard line. 12 yards there as they move the chains. We always talk about having to read defenses and how complicated that is. Well, this was an excellent read. Read the pressure and got rid of the football before it even got to him for a nice game. And when they're blitzing like that, running back usually a good spot to go with a football? Without a doubt, because he's right in your sight line or he's near you. So you're able to just get it to him easily. And once he gets in space, that's usually a good matchup for him. On first down, Rodgers. And complete on the right side to Bennett. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. As the clock will stop with 33 seconds to go in the first half. And welcome back. The offensive unit, they took the timeout. And now they get set to line up as we resume action.
Here we go with second and seven. To throw is Rodgers. And that one will fall incomplete. Clock here now, just under 30 seconds to go in this first half. Pretty nice coverage there, but a missed opportunity for an interception. Let's face it, a lot of these defenders, they've got it all. Speed, athleticism, hands, a little bit questionable. The Packers on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and seven. And again, it's Rodgers. Let's it go for Nelson. And a shot taken on third down, unsuccessful. Fourth down now. Sure, that pass was incomplete. They made an attempt to get a big one downfield. But that's okay because the second part of that is if you don't get the completion, at least you've told the defense you're trying to stretch them out a little bit, and they may have to change accordingly. On now is the Packers punter as he's on to kick it away. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. Murray now as they run it to start the drive. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. No gain on the play there. Second down. Well, we stopped on that play. We've had plenty of carries all afternoon. Every now and then the defense is going to win one, but I don't think they'll shy away from handing it to him the rest of the game. So we've reached halftime here in Minnesota with the Vikings on top as we send you down to our EA Sports Studios in Orlando where we find our man Larry Ridley with our halftime report. So here we go. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. First and 10. Murray's going to break into the secondary, and nobody can stop him on this long touchdown. Vikings tied up at seven. Midway through the first quarter, Rodgers going to find his mark, and it leads to a touchdown. That takes the lead up to seven. Now third and eight. Keenum's got the completion here, and he caps off the seven-play drive with a score. That puts them up by a field goal. All right, Larry, thank you. A fairly tight game here as we get set to resume play in this second half. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This fielded at the two. And he will be marked out right there at the 20-yard line. The Packers offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting because three straight drives have ended with them punting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. Quarter starting with a run from Montgomery. He'll get about three as he's taken down at the 23. 
not a big run on the first play of the drive, but that doesn't necessarily mean it was a bad play. Sometimes you're just trying to settle in, get your guys a little bit of contact, and get things moving. Second down following the run. Rodgers handing to Montgomery. Takes this to the 27. Give him four yards. If you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. The Packers on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. Here it's third and two. They'll run it. Here's Montgomery. And not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. Just a one-yard pick up there, and it'll be fourth down. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, hard to get them started again occasionally. On now is the Packers punter. He's been terrific so far. field tackling there a 50 yard punt followed by just a one yard return and the Vikings will take over here first and 10 it's the Vikings turn on offense we get ready for their first possession of the second half they have the lead here well we talk a lot about pregame speeches what are halftime speeches like for the most part not nearly as emotional they're a lot more clinical Every now and then, though, they'll get after you if they think they need to light a fire. But in this case, let's go into the virtual locker room because here's what I think happened. They got in there and they said, listen, let's take control right away. Yeah, Defense, we got the lead. Yeah. We got the, de we got the, we got the lead. Defense, don't give up any points. Turn the ball back over to the offense and let them go down and score and give us more of a cushion in the game. Check so far. Defense shut them down. Let's see if the offense gets done. Well, a well-executed blitz, no doubt. Great job by the linebacker. Maybe the quarterback, if he could have seen that, could have audibled there. Yeah, he needed to be in a different play because that one just meshed perfectly for the defense. All the gaps were filled, except for the one the offense really wanted to run through, and that was filled by a big man wanting to make a tackle. And he made a great tackle. On second down, here's Keenum. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Stephon Diggs, his intended receiver. And yeah, that'll make it third down. The effort's always going to be there. Everyone's always going to try and make a catch, but underthrown balls, I think, are the toughest ones to come back and get because usually your momentum's going in the opposite direction when you're trying to stop, break, and come back and get it. Let's go! Throwing his Keenum on third down. here as he's taken down Mike Daniels able to run him down for a 15 yard loss and it'll be fourth down I remember when I was a kid and all I wanted was a nickel so I could get that soda down at the fountain and guess what the nickel came into play well five defensive backs they covered well allowed for the sacks sodas were a nickel when you were a kid no I just needed the extra nickel so, oh. I, could pay the, so I could pay the proper okay, price how much were they a dime <laughs> what were they uh, 15 cents Here's Ryan Quigley now, as his first punt will come from inside his own end zone. Rush comes and they block it. Pressure comes, but it doesn't prevent him from getting off a good one here. And a blocked punt always can be such a momentum swing. In a big way, because now the spark has been lit. Everyone gets involved with that team. And many times, coaches preach, you block a punt, you block a kick, that usually leads to victory. Right, here we go. Green. 
Now a first down throw. Keenum throwing middle, but it's incomplete. And fans, a quick reminder from the NFL, after nearly a decade of working together in the fight against breast cancer, this year the NFL and the American Cancer Society, they're broadening the scope of their efforts to tackle multiple types of cancer. And you can learn more about the expanded Crucial Catch initiative and access the Defender, a new digital tool that provides personalized tips on reducing your cancer risk at NFL.com slash Crucial Catch. And I applaud the NFL for broadening its, its scope here because cancer affects us all in many different ways ways and now everyone will have the ones that they can focus on and be able to support that one goes for 24 yards that two tight ends in the formation on that one it looked to me like he had his pick of receivers downfield i think he was just planning on going over the middle that's what he did picked up first down too And the offense lining up first and ten. Carries piling up. It's Murray again. And a big hit at the end of that one. He's knocked down hard. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. So nothing there, but maybe you blame that on the blocking. Yeah, at some point, you've got to win at the point of attack. And on that play, that was all the defense. They made it happen. All right, here we go. Three, 19. Ah! Again, it's Murray. It's a gain of about three, but it's going to leave him with third and still seven yards to go. So where'd all that running room that he had in the first half go? Because it looks like it's drying up a little bit here. Someone made some adjustments, it appears, at least on this drive. The Vikings on third down. They've had good success, five for eight to this point. This is third and seven. Hurry up, here we go. Blue lady. Blue lady. Ah! Now Keenum. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. Now they've got to be a little frustrated here to not complete that on third down after having such a long drive going. Now you're talking about going over 70 yards on the drive. Yeah, did you say a little frustrated? <laughs> Very frustrated. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Very frustrated. There's no doubt about it. They thought they were going to have a chance to cash in in the end zone. Now it looks like it's likely a field goal attempt. He gets us away. It's a good one. Drawing toward the sidelines. That one sails out of bounds. The side judge will walk it off. And he says it went out of bounds at the nine-yard line. Nice punt. Now the Packers get set to go. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. And not great starting field position here for the offense. They'll try to get something going with Ty Montgomery. And space opens a bit as he gets it across the 15 to the 17-yard line. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave him with a second and two. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but a guy carrying the ball. He was the finisher. A really nice run. And some options here for the offense on second and two. And seeing nowhere to throw, he chucks this one away from harm. Incomplete. Now it's third down. The Packers on third down. Just one for five to this point. This time they face a third and two. Third down, they go Montgomery. And a penalty flag down as he gets only about a yard. And let's listen in on the call. Holding offense. 
So instead of giving them another third down, they'll decline it, brings up four. Now that's smart football right there. You don't even have to really spend a lot of time considering it. Just know that you're probably going to get the ball back. Good job declining that penalty. On now is the Packers punter as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. Here's Sheryls. That's going to go in the books as a 55-yard punt. Well done. And possession will switch hands first and 10. And our attention here turns to Latavius Murray. So after that hot start, the numbers here show the decline. What has the defense done adjustment-wise? Sometimes when you have a running back who's gotten off to a hot start, you've got to catch him before he really gets going. So you change what you do across the defensive front. Instead of the linebackers being back a few yards, you bring them up closer. It's what we call mugging the line of scrimmage, taking away a lot of blocking angles and gaps and maybe stopping him before he can get going. Mugging the line of scrimmage, okay. Yeah, in this case. Now let's go. Green, Throwing on first down is Keenum. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. Charles, want to make a quick pivot and get your thoughts on the running back injuries from last week in the NFL. Gosh, we had Dalvin Cook, Chris Carson, Ty Montgomery as well go down. You hate to see injuries with anyone, but if we're going to keep it to the running backs, how about Dalvin Cook and Chris Carson, both rookies who had taken over as the lead running backs for their respective teams, Minnesota and Seattle. You hate to see them gone. Ty Montgomery transitioned to become a running back last year. He's the lead guy for Green Bay. Rib injury, they say it's not as serious as suspected, but still, a rib, rib injury for a running back, that's tough to deal with. Yeah, and really tough for Dalvin Cook with a torn ACL done for the season. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. 4C and completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in an expected right, passing situation. Play action. It's Keenum. He's going to go for a big play downfield. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. And you just know when that play call came in, their eyes lit up because anytime you get a chance to take a big shot downfield, that's a lot of fun, and they missed an opportunity. Here's Ryan Quigley now. Remember, though, he did have one blocked earlier. And he uncorks a beauty. Best of the day. Yeah, he was looking for the checkup bounce. Didn't get it. That scoots all the way into the end zone now for a touchback. The Green Bay offense now about ready to take possession here. Now, if you're a fan of punting, and I know that not many people are, but this game kind of turning into one for you. Well, it's okay if it's a skills contest, right? We're really into it then, but not during the course of an actual game. This has turned into a field position game, though. Sometimes a better punter may actually determine the outcome. Montgomery to begin the drive. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. It's really come into vogue to talk about the, the different gaps that the defense tries to attack in an offensive line. And most of the time we're talking about blitzes. How many times have you heard double A-gap blitz? Well, where is the A-gap? It's the space between the center and the guards, either side. So when you're having a double-A gap blitz, that's two guys coming through that gap. In this situation, though, that A gap wasn't open for the defense to exploit. The offensive line took care of it, protected it, and moved the defensive guys out of the way to allow for that nice run. First down, they run again. Here's Montgomery. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. That's another nice run. And I have to tell you, some of the coaches that I played for, their philosophies were always different when they see a guy running the ball well. 
Some of them wanted to immediately go to play action and throw it now because it's wide open. But other coaches said, you know something? Until they stop him, that big boy is going to keep getting the football. And that might be the direction that they're going to go right now. So the run gets them the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. On play action, it's Rodgers. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Linval Joseph forcing his way through there to drop him for a loss of a good 10 yards. Sometimes I watch games and wonder why they use play fakes on certain passing situations because it's not going to fool anyone. I don't know if that was the case here, but the end result was the same. No one fooled. The quarterback was hit. counter and he went nowhere well he went backwards back to the 33 and he'll lose a yard that time and that's going to lead to a third down okay even just being nice the last two plays were not very good offensively so if you're the play caller was it the team's execution or was it strategy if it was execution you continue to call the game the way you're calling it but the strategy change up what you're doing and figure it out Need something for deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. Now a play fake. Rodgers. In the middle of the field, he's got Nelson. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. An incredible play there. They do get big yardage, but they're still stopped a yard or two short, and it's fourth down. If you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him, even if he has an elite defender on him, because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. And now out comes Minnesota. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with a game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. and 10. Here's Keenum. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Morgan. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. That throw good for four. It's second down. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. Coming up now for Murray. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. Call it a gain of seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. And that last carry puts him right at 100 yards for the game. So how has he done it? Because he's been patient. Followed his blocks, let everything develop, and then burst through for big gains. here on first down and his throw is incomplete 
Hey, partner, while we have a second, wanted to mention Deshaun Watson giving up his first game check to those three Texans workers in the cafeteria who had lost so much in Hurricane Harvey. How cool was that? It's cool, and truthfully, it's not surprising when it comes from Deshaun Watson. Do you remember during the draft, after he got drafted, he read that letter yeah. to his mother? Yep. This is a kid who's empathetic, cares about people, cares about the world, and for him to make that gesture... The only thing that he's worried about is that it actually got out. You know, I don't think that he wanted it to be a public thing, but it just tells you just about who Deshaun Watson is. And how about his follow-up in the game? Yeah, he was against unbelievable. Tennessee. I mean, boy, he paid that off in a big way. And those workers, they'll never forget that. And everyone knows Deshaun Watson, he's the real deal in every aspect. Let's go! Blue Liner! Blue Liner! Throwing on third down, Keenum. He's got the connection over the middle to Diggs. And he lost the football. And the Packers pick it up. And he's going to take this one back to the 37-yard line. Well, he did what he's known for. He made the catch, then he turned into a runner, took the contact, and coughed it up. And all I remember as a player, when they catch the ball, when those acrobatic guys catch it, you have to make them pay sometimes. You have to put it on them, big tackle, knock the ball free, anything you can do to slow them down. The Packer offense now ready to get back onto the field. And both of these defenses have been stifling these last few drives offensively, just not able to get anything going. So what needs to change? I think a lot of the guys will go back and review, so to speak, because everyone has someone assigned to how did each play work? Okay, what did, what did we use that kind of worked for us during this game? Try and get back to some of those plays, as well as the possibility of showing something you haven't shown already in this game and trying to change things up. We'll see if they take the advice of Mr. Davis. They'll run it now out of the gun, and he'll get three down of the 34-yard line. Partner, you know I love to point out when teams break tendency and do something a little bit different from the norm. But when you run the ball in the first play of the drive, that's not a tendency breaker at all. That's just trying to establish yourself as you move forward. And they will not have time to get another play in here as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now at beautiful new U.S. Bank Stadium. It's the Packers who have the football, but in need of points as we begin quarter number four. Decent chunk of yardage still left here, second and seven. Shotgun now for Rodgers. And Nelson's got it here right side. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. The old connection, Rodgers to Nelson, getting Green Bay a first down. For Jordy last year, tremendous. NFL's comeback player of the year, 97 catches, over 1,200 yards, and led the NFL 14 receiving touchdowns. Well deserving to be the comeback player of the year, but I know these types of competitors, they don't like to be the ones to come back from anything. They just want to be consistent, and Jordy Nelson is definitely that. Throwing on first down is Rodgers. That is caught at the seven. And they do stop him, but he takes it all the way to the two. A good pick up there, a 22. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. They'll run for it with Montgomery. And he pushes forward but comes up short of the goal line as he'll get a yard down to about the one. 
He gets it halfway there with that run. I think you play up-tempo, get right back on the line of scrimmage, and hammer at him again. Someone moved, flag is out, that's going to be five yards. And that'll drive coaches crazy. You work all week on dealing with loud crowds, on dealing with motion, and then you have a guy jump. Well, the crowd's not doing that O-line any favors. Home field advantage is really kicking in, making it very difficult for them to hear the snap count. you need to do is get pushed backwards to take a sack but he couldn't find anywhere to go with the football had to eat it and ended up on the ground This offense on third down today, it's been a problem. Just one for seven thus far. This is third and goal. Shotgun now for Rodgers. And it's caught. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. They're able to hold him to three there, and that leads to a fourth and goal. Well, partner, they're still going to have to go for it after that play, and I'm not sure that the running game is going to be a part of what they have to do on fourth down now. From this far out, you wouldn't think so. Likely the play of the game here, trailing in the final quarter and going for it on fourth and goal. Now Rodgers, got to have this one. That is caught by Cobb, and it's a Packer touchdown. Randall Cobb, two catches, two touchdowns here so far, and the Packers are an extra point away from taking the lead. Big fourth down conversion for the score and the defense. That is a tough pill to swallow. Big time for them. How about them just deciding to go for it on fourth down? And, oh, okay, forget the field goal because that looked like an easy three points. Yeah, you might have had a defensive breakdown in there, but they pressed the issue and found a way to get it into the end zone. Give them big credit for that. So that drives seven plays in length. And the result, a Green Bay score. Crosby on now to kick it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he'll wind up about four yards shy of where he would have been if he had taken a knee as they'll start at the 21-yard line. And now out comes Minnesota. And last time, not only the turnover, but that turned into six points. They got to make up for that here. We always hear about empty possessions. 
but some are worse than others. You can have an empty possession, pump the ball away, get yourself set to play defense, but when you turn it over, it changes momentum, and when they take it downfield and punch it in on you, that's a bad possession all the way around. Yeah, but you're hungry to get back out there, aren't you? You better be, because otherwise, it's going to be a long day for you. Keenum now on first down. And the Packers give him nowhere to go, and they bring him down. And on that one, the protection just broke down. You've got to have that leverage, don't you? We always talk about low man wins in the running game for an offensive lineman versus a defensive lineman. It's essentially the same thing in pass protection. Get lower than that defensive lineman so that you can keep your balance and keep him away from your guy trying to throw the football. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Now Keenum throwing on second. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. It's a lot of contact going on there. And in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. The Vikings on third down. They've converted five times in their many chances thus far. This is third and 17. Let's go! Shotgun snap for Keenum. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's the one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. Here's Ryan Quigley now, as he's on to punt for Minnesota. This is fielded at the 27. A big boot that time. 57 yards, the official distance. And it'll be Packer football here. First down and 10. Aaron Rodgers, he's getting ready to go again here on offense. And he had the touchdown of the last drive, also four for four. Very, very effective. What does he need to do to translate that forward into this drive? Not think that what he saw in coverages last time is exactly what he's going to get again. He's got to play ahead and start, and start thinking to himself, okay, we just did that. What are they going to take away now? What do we go to as a counter and continue to encourage his offensive line to continue to give him time? They were really good on the last drive. They'll go to Montgomery to try to wind some clock. They showed off the athletic juke. Good little gain there. Not a whole lot of real estate, but a nice carry. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and that'll bring up a second in just about a few inches here. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old-school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. Saw him through three quarters. No reason to lighten up now. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. They'll keep pounding here with Montgomery. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. So they pick up the first down after the run, and now they approach for the fresh set. They'll run with a backup. This is Williams. And he picks up about six as he gets this down to the 41. So the solid run on first, and I would imagine no real hurry to run that second down play. No, it's all in your quarterback now. He's going to keep an eye on the play clock and bleed things down, and he's not going to let the ball be snapped until it's inside three seconds left on the play clock. 
Unless, of course, you're playing a video game, you're trying to run it up on your friend. <laughs> nice touch. Cold-blooded, too. Now it's Rodgers, and the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in. The Packers on third down. Just one conversion and eight tries. Not good. This is third and four. From the gun, it's Rodgers. It's caught. Nelson. Well, he's taken down, but not before picking up the first thanks to a flashy little spin move. We'll give him 10 yards on that one, and that'll earn him a fresh set of downs. Couldn't just sit on it here, could they? Had to throw the ball on third down. Got the big completion in the pickup. Fresh set of downs now. They've got to feel great. And defensively a backbreaker. push his way forward here for a good little gain. Yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Uh, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking for, and make sure that they're still attacking, yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. And he's brought down. Trailing in the fourth, this close of a game, that's a penalty you just can't afford. It's an absolute killer, and it's one that drives coaches and teammates insane. First and goal from the eight. Following the penalty, it's Williams. And he's going to take it in. Touchdown, Packers. A great effort there. An eight-yard touchdown run. And the Packers add on to their lead. And they're able to run it in. It started with the battle in the trenches. They won there, and they got in for six points. And that's going to be a tough one for the defense to deal with. They've got to go to the bench now and figure out how are we going to slow down this running game because on that particular play, they had no answer. Now Crosby for the point after. And with that, the lead is up to eight. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told. And the capper that put it in the end zone, a run of eight yards. beyond now to kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. Now Case Keenum in the offense heading back onto the field. And the passing game, I mean, look at the numbers. It's falling off. When a team is struggling, sometimes you look at the quarterback. When the quarterback starts to struggle, who goes over and picks him up? Yeah, that's always a big one, isn't it? Usually... There's a quarterback whisperer somewhere. And what I mean by that is, whether it's an assistant coach, whether it's one of his best friends on the team, someone that can get in his ear, 
get with him and say, all right, my man, what do you need? What's going on here? So he's one person he can lean on. He's going to have to lean on that guy right now. Now Kano. Throw left side complete. It's right. Give him nine there on the first down completion. First play of the drive in their hip pocket. Of course, the focus here has to be the touchdown of the two-point conversion. Field goals aren't going to help you. Yeah, but how about that first play of the drive? Just to get them started, nice game, got some positive momentum going. They're on their way, and they don't have to rush. So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. Now a give. This is Murray. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. Second and one, and people want to run the football. This is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there, pick up the first down. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Let's go. Green, 39. Now contact Green, up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? Encroachment, defense. A little antsy on the left side of the line. Yeah, I think they got the guy in the end. I think they got the DN there on that one. And let's face it, he is so amped up. Wanting to get a good get off on the snap. Jump too quickly. Let's go. Now a play fake here on first down. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. He was looking for Adam Thielen there. And that'll bring up second down. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. Second down now after the incompletion. Hurry up, here we go. To throw, it's Keenum. Incomplete, almost intercepted. They haven't picked him off yet. Would have been a great time for the first, but instead it's third down. I guess they're in a situation now, fourth quarter, where they're forced to take some chances, but I don't know that that was the type of a chance you want to take. And that one could very easily have been intercepted. And if it does get picked off, that could possibly seal this one. It looks like the Packers have added an extra DB on third down. Working from the gun, Keenum. It's brought in by Floyd. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. And the play goes for 19 yards. Gives him a new set of downs. comes to the line now first and ten on play action now Keenum and it pops free the collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down let's face it perfection is something we all chase whether it's playing this game or whatever we do Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. So the incomplete pass brings up second down. Now Keenum again. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he'll go down at the 28. Give him eight on the play, and they're going to face a third down.
Trying to keep the drive going here. This is play number seven on third and two. Now we've got movement up front. And I think this is going to be on Minnesota. That was a third and somewhat manageable now, not so manageable. Exactly, because you had a play call on that you felt like, hey, this could go quick, and it doesn't take much to get it done. Now, you've got to start thinking about a little bit of a deeper route type of a call, especially if you want to throw it. Here's play number seven on the drive. This is third and seven. To the air again, Keenum. And down he goes. They sack him back right around the 41-yard line. Clay Matthews with a big-time sack on third down. And it'll be a loss of seven. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Here's Ryan Quigley now, as he's on to punt for Minnesota. And this will be up to the ruling of the side judge here. He says it crossed out of bounds at the 16-yard line. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. And the offense here just looking to stay in bounds, complete the short passes, and put this game on ice. They'll start on the ground with Montgomery. And that closed up quickly there as he gets it up only to about the 17. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. You know, I was going to ask you if maybe they should surprise and pass the ball, but where they're at on the field, I think keep it on the ground, right? I like where you're going with this one because field position is going to determine these play calls. And backed up where they are, I don't even think about putting the ball in the air. I tell my running backs, grasp the football, and I tell my offensive line. Now the pressure comes, and he goes down. Just inside the 10, back at the 9. So it's Packer football here as we welcome you back. They're facing a critical third down now as they try to hold on to this lead. And the offense now will try to regroup after the sack on second down. On third and long, it's Rodgers. This is going to be incomplete. Two huge plays there down the stretch. The sack on second down. Now they force the incompletion. That's going to lead to a do or die fourth down. And they look like they've got the confidence right now that no matter what gets thrown against them, but whatever play gets run, they have the ability to shut it down. They are just brimming with it right now. now is the Packers punter as he'll come on to kick this one away. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. Slips past him. Where'd he go? A good return there. Call it 13 yards. And out will come the offense as they take over. Now Case Keenum and the offense heading back onto the field. This is something we've seen many times over the course of his career. Can he pull off another fourth quarter comeback? It's very strange, isn't it? Because when it's a player of this magnitude, even though the guys on defense have the lead and are sitting in the best spot, they're maybe the most nervous people in the stadium because they've seen this happen to too many people before, too many teams. 
They've got to find a way to shut him down. Here we go again for the grizzled vet. They'll look to throw. Going with a screen for Murray. And he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. Call it a loss of two on the play. And that'll make it second and 12. He's back to throw. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. And now maybe they want some extra time to talk about this third and long play as we'll get a timeout. As he'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. So it's third and long, and defensively, not a real surprise. They're in the dime. Let's go. Green, 39. Back to throw. It's complete to Laquan Treadwell. And he's finally taken down the night before getting across midfield and across the 45-yard line. They get 20 yards there on third and 19 and an unlikely first down. And he can't get a throw. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Mike Daniels in there to drop him as the clock continues to roll. He'll look to throw. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And now maybe they want some extra time to talk about this third and long play as we'll get a timeout. As the clock will stop with 45 seconds left to go in the game. So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock. there as it's intercepted and it's ha ha Clinton Dix with a pick and this one will be returned to right around the 38 yard line well they needed the touchdown and the two point conversion but they're not going to get a shot at either this is a great play here defensively Brandon and at a time that they sorely needed one and that could be enough to help get them out of here with a victory Trotting out there, the Packers getting ready to go. They have the lead, obviously, late in the game. I guess the good news for them is if for some reason they would make a mistake, a field goal does the opposition no good. Everyone loves to have a little bit of a cushion, and that helps you immeasurably. But the bottom line is, do all the things that you're taught in order to close out the game. Don't even let that become an issue. Yeah, but still a one-possession game. This one not fully over yet. The Packers looking to get out of here with a win as they take the knee. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. It'll be their third and final timeout, so as they talk things over, we'll step aside. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. will take a knee here and that should be all she wrote.
The Packers on third down. Just a 20% success rate at 2 of 10. This is going to be third and 13. A great come from behind victory in this one, Charles. And really the difference, obviously, was that fourth quarter. They dominated. And it has to start with believing that you can make that comeback. Because we've been in games before. We've done games where you just look at one team and realize they have no chance of making it back. Not in the one we just saw here. They did it, and they did it well. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gaughan. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. From Minneapolis, so long, everybody.